Before we start the review, I'd like to give the biggest thanks to Lucif on Twitter for the amazing work she did on the thumbnail artwork. She's an awesome person who I've been following for a while, and to have her do artwork for a thumbnail is uh, is really something else. And I highly recommend checking out her artwork, uh, and you can find it through her Twitter, uh, which I'll link in the description. Thanks, Lucif, and I hope you guys enjoy the review. Remember back last year when I discussed Grave Encounters and how the films probably inspired the ideas for Outlast? Well, since then I've gone back and played through the game and discovered that I wasn't too far off. Outlast is basically a found footage movie simulator that carries the tropes of those films, sometimes to a fault. What's the game itself about, though? Well, let's take a look. The protagonist of the game is Miles Upshur. I know, clever naming, right? He's an investigative journalist who receives an anonymous email that states bad things are happening within the walls of the Mount Massive Insane Asylum. Like any rational person would, he decides to head into the asylum at the ass crack of dusk with nothing but a video camera fitted with a night vision light. Clearly this plan he has lasts all of about 5 seconds as once he's inside, he's attacked by the inmates and trapped within the confines of the complex. Thus begins Miles' journey to escape. Outlast for an indie game released in 2013 looks pretty damn good. I played the game on an Xbox One X and the game holds off some really good lighting and textures. There's some impressive particle effects in the air and the small weather effects are really nice too. Even little details like the fact Miles leaves bloody footprints after he steps in blood puddles just makes the environment much more believable. I had no stuttering throughout my playthrough and the game ran at a consistent FPS the entire time. The music is pretty creepy as well and most of the tracks really heighten the tension when you're being chased, which happens a lot, but even the sound effects are spot on. For an indie game, it's hard to fault Outlast for its performance. The only thing I don't like is that every time the game has to load a new area, a big loading screen pops up, which is a huge immersion breaker. But other than that, it's pretty much spot on. Moving on to gameplay, Outlast, as I said before, is a found footage horror movie simulator. Your only controls are to move miles, jump, lean, sprint, crouch, interact with the environment, and pull up your camera. There is a slight parkour and climbing mechanic mimicking something like Mirror's Edge, but given the setting, just don't expect anything too fancy. Outlast's most unique feature, however, is the camera itself. Since the asylum is in a bit of disarray, you need to utilize the night vision feature on the camera to see in the dark. The camera runs off of batteries, which I find a bit odd, not necessarily because of the power source, but because of how short the life of the batteries is. I mean, these things will probably give you three or so minutes in the dark, tops. I just feel like them lasting this long doesn't make much sense. Nevertheless, you'll have to scavenge around for batteries to keep yourself from being lost in the dark, and they're pretty generous about giving these to you. The only thing that'll save you from absolutely running amok with these things is the fact that the game limits how many you can carry, and the amount is decided by which difficulty mode you choose to play on, which also decides how much damage Miles can take before kicking the bucket. I played Outlast on hard mode, but that's not saying much as you're never really faced with more than a single enemy at once until later in the game, and even then the game has extremely frequent checkpoints. There's no combat in Outlast, so your only way to protect yourself is to hide or run away. Most of your objectives are limited to simply opening something up or turning something on, and as such the game doesn't have a lot of unique objectives. Speaking of uniqueness, this leads me to my criticisms of Outlast, of which I have a few. Outlast doesn't have an original bone in its body, really. Most of the scares in this game are from something popping out at you, and very rarely is it ever an actual threat. Remember how I said that Outlast takes a lot of tropes from found footage horror movies? That includes a lot of false scares, loud noises, and a dumb protagonist whose only trait is being silent, which doesn't make the game any better. In Miles' notes, which you can collect by recording certain events, he actually comes off as hostile and douchey. The setting itself is literally one of the most cliché horror settings you could possibly imagine as well. The spooky ghost asylum! Woo! <sighs> Hell. The controls can be a bit awkward as well, and sometimes Miles will just get stuck on an object in the way or won't jump over something so minuscule in height, leading to some frustration and a few cheap deaths. Outlast is a pretty short game as well, if you know where to go. The game took me just about three hours to complete, and that's with me actively searching for every collectible and recording, and dying a fair amount of times. My last complaint is that the story is kind of stupid and relies on a lot of technobabble to explain things, and without spoiling anything, the ending leaves you wanting a lot more, but I'll get to that in a second. I think if you're looking for a good horror game to play over an afternoon and don't mind some rough edges, Outlast will definitely be a game you can enjoy, and if it's on sale, don't hesitate. Sink your teeth into the horror, but expect there to be a lot of blood in return. 
The one thing I'd recommend doing is buying the Whistleblower DLC with the game as well, which makes Outlast a good whole package and wraps up the story in a much better fashion. Whistleblower is a story DLC pack for Outlast, which is a sort of prequel-slash-sequel storyline. In this story, you play as Waylon Park, who's the man who initially tipped off Miles about the happenings of the Asylum. His little telling is discovered, though, and he's fitted into the experimentation the patients of the Asylum are being subjected to, until the place is thrown into disarray and the patients run rampant throughout the facility. Waylon gets his hands on a night vision camera and sets out to escape. Gameplay is pretty much the same, as well as the controls and sound. There's some new music as well, which makes chases just as tense. Waylon's notes reveal him to be a much more likable character than Miles, although he is still silent, and the ending actually wraps things up quite nicely. I'm gonna try not to spoil things, but there's also a part in the game where Waylon takes a pretty bad blow and the chases get really creepy, to the point that I looked behind myself and screamed. Sadly, the control issues were never really fixed, and in terms of progression, it can be difficult to tell where you're supposed to go next. There's one section in particular which takes place outside in the middle of the fog, and I hated this part because I couldn't tell where exactly I was supposed to go, basically forcing me to hug the walls until I found an opening. Even still, Whistleblower is even shorter than the base game. Again, searching for collectibles and recordings, and dying quite a few times, I beat Whistleblower in just about an hour and 45 minutes. For all my complaints though, Whistleblower is still a great addition to Outlast, and I would recommend getting it along with the game itself, as you don't have a complete story otherwise. Outlast as a whole, while it has a lot of problems, is a solid horror game that is most effective in its subtle moments and chases. And if there's one thing I'm sure of, is that I'm going to be seeing Richard Traeger and Eddie Gluskin in my nightmares tonight.